Okay, good afternoon class. Welcome back to Science 10. Uh, today we're going to be looking at Lesson 8, and specifically we're going to look at endangered species. These are going to be groups of organisms, groups of, of animals and plants that are at risk for survival. Uh, they are things that could become extinct if they're not taken care of. So what we want to do first is look at what are the different levels of risk because something could be very at risk. For instance, if you are standing in the middle of a highway and there's a transport coming, you're probably at a very high risk. But if you're standing on the edge of the road, maybe not exactly on the side, well, you might be in danger, but not as bad as if you're in the middle of the road. So you've got different levels of danger depending on where you are. It's the same thing with species. They have different levels of endangerment. So we're going to be looking at how we qualify that. And at the end, you'll have a little assignment eight. So let's look at the first slide here. All right, so these are the following things we're going to be looking at. Extinct, something that's extinct, no longer here. Endangered, threatened, and vulnerable. Vulnerable means it's probably the lowest level of risk, but you're not completely safe. Okay? For instance, if I'm standing outside in wintertime with my winter coat on, then I'm pretty safe. But if I stand out there without my winter coat on and it's windy, then I'm vulnerable. I'm vulnerable probably for frostbite. If I stay there long enough, I could, you know, probably could die if it was really cold. So you, we look at different levels of risk. So the first thing it's looking at is, what do we mean by extinct? Well, extinct means there's nothing left, okay? And here's an example of things that no longer have a dinosaur, a woolly mammoth, and this is called a dodo bird, okay? There were never, there were really were such a thing as a dodo bird. So these, they, they knew we existed because we have evidence of them. We find their bones, they're in the fossil records. And endangered species are ones that face a very, very high risk in the very near future. It means that their numbers are declining. There's not many left. And they're almost extinct in the wild. Where they have some of them are in either zoos or in conservation parks where they're being protected. And they have trouble breeding. If without them, without help, then they'll die right out of existence. And why? Well, these are the things that makes them, puts them in danger. Pollution. Whatever they're living on, the air, the water, the food, is killing them. Deforestation, that is taking away their home, their habitat. So when you cut down the forest, the trees, they got no place to go. And hunting, killing them for no other reason. One time people used to hunt for food, now people hunt for sport, and there's no reason to hunt them and they kill them. So there's an example of something that is endangered. It's a Ridley turtle, they're very, very small. These mountain gorillas, the western gorilla, the gorilla, it is endangered. And here's an American condor, California condor, and the bluefin tuna from the oceans. So these are the ones that, in the very near future, they could be extinct. Threatened. Now that's the next level. It's not as bad as endangered, but they are likely to become within the foreseeable future. Not right away, but in a maybe in the long term. In order to become threatened, they're losing their habitat. They're just completely gone, but they're starting to lose it. There's been overhunting of them, could be poaching, and of course, pollution. And these are two of them that are threatened. We have the emperor penguin and the, the bison. Now, these ones here, these buffalo, they have them in parks. But remember, one time there were millions of them going across the American and the Canadian prairies. Now, there's only hundreds of them. Okay? Because they used to be killed just for their hide. So those are what we call threatened. And then the last ones are vulnerable. They could face threats in the wild. In maybe the, it could be a long term for now, but we have to watch it. Lions, it's unbelievable, but the African lion is vulnerable. It's at risk. And the African elephant, they're being hunted for their ivory. So in maybe they're being preserved now in parks, 
but the poachers are still getting in there and killing them. So it has to be more done to try and protect them. Uh, here's another two examples, the Komodo dragon. Those are the ones you'll see down in the uh, Galapagos Islands and over near Japan. And the Galapagos tor tortoise, the big sea tortoise. In Canada, we also have endangered species. <laughs> this is the blue walleye. Walleye is a pickerel, it's a freshwater fish, very good eating. But this particular uh, breed of them is very, very limited. The hooping cranes, grizzly bears, unbelievable, but grizzly bears are in danger. And this one called the fowler's toad. And finally, not the only ones, but some of the ones that we're thinking about, the Atlantic cod. They had to stop fishing. They were overfished cod. One time you've seen these uh, little clips on TV where they're supposedly when the early explorers came over, there was so much fish off of Newfoundland that the boats used to slow down. But you don't see that now. And the Atlantic cod fisheries uh, has declined. And that's why a lot of Newfoundlanders are out of work. Now, these things here, amphibians, are the ones that can live on land and in the water. And wolves, they're not the only ones that are disappearing. We know that wolves are disappearing. But here is something else. There's 100, 250 species of plants and animals that are at risk. Some of the high profile ones, the bald eagle, the hooping crane, the buffalo, the panda bear. And why? Because of human action. If we do things, though, we can't protect them. The things that we're doing, though, to hurt them is that we're destroying their home, their habitat. You know, cutting down the forest and making cities and roads. Chemicals from our plants and into the air, into our rivers, are killing them. Hunting them, willful slaughter them, just for sport. One time, Back in the 19th century, that's uh, just over 100 years ago, there were millions of these buffalo. And there were millions of passenger pigeons. But because there's so many of them, doesn't mean that they won't die. People figure, oh, there's too many, don't worry about it, you'll never kill them all. But it happens over time. People just shot passenger pigeons just for the heck of it. And it finally killed them off. The, the, those pigeons were the most bountiful, birds in the world one time. Now we've halted the hunting of buffalo and we have some left. So now we have buffalo or less than 400, less than 400 buffalo in the world. And usually they're in parks. One time they were in millions. Why are they being uh, preserved? Because of breeding practices. They're trying to control them, protect them and allow them to breed in, in safe, uh, safe areas. Now we have over 200,000. So from 1985 to 2018 now, we have more than 200,000 buffalo. So that's how we can improve in it if we just get smart about it. The passenger pigeon, though, cannot be saved. They were the most numerous bird on Earth. There were 5 billion of them, and now there's none. The last passenger pigeon died in 1914 as a wilf, result of willful slaughter. Imagine someone got out and said, ah, there's the last bird, I'm going to kill it. But some of these things are not always harmful. We always think that we have a natural disaster like a hurricane or a forest fire. Uh, it's bad, but actually forest fires are good. Forest fires destroy a lot of the old dead plants and they also the wind allows the seeds to blow and to go into other areas where it can grow. Uh, so letting some forest fires go helps to regenerate the forest. They will kill mature trees and allow conditions in which seeds can germinate and young trees begin to grow. So it is a good thing in, in limited quantity. Uh, this is a bird. It needs these young jack pine forests in order to live, so it has to have a regeneration of it. Without the young uh, trees, then it doesn't have any food. It needs the young ones to feed. 
and sometimes erosion prevents certain species from becoming extinct or endangered. Uh, this toad it lives on the sand dunes. So if it starts to wash away, it's allowed to be able to go and nest there, okay, and work in there. So winter storms help produce new habitats through erosion. So you know how in the wintertime the ice comes in, the strong waves, it eats away at the bank? So that helps the, uh, this particular toad, this amphibian, uh, to proliferate, you know, to live. This is just a, a thing, remember we talked about extinct, endangered. Extirpated doesn't mean it means you're moving it, you're taking it away from, they did that to the wolves. They took wolves from Alberta and they moved some of them down to Yellowstone. And uh, there's a film on that, I'll talk about this later, but it was good for Yellowstone. They were able to, one time there was lots of wolves down there, but the farmers down in the States didn't like them or into their uh, killing of animals, they shot them, they shot them all the time. And then there was no wolves left. So they brought wolves down from Canada to help uh, repopulate them because the wolves were necessary. Without the wolves, you'll find out later that certain other animals start to uh, start to uh, uh, proliferate. Things like coyotes start to become the more dominant animal. And other, other uh, animals like the elk uh, become uh, more and more in number. The wolves used to kill them. And then another one used to kill the elk. And then the elk ate all the food that these other animals needed. So we can see it by province here, all these species that are uh, different. If you look at in New Brunswick, we have four species that went extinct, six that are endangered, four that are threatened, 16 that are vulnerable. Most of them, of course, are in Ontario and Quebec, which are the biggest provinces. They cover 25% uh, of the area and the most densely populated. And most of the at-risk species are usually near the southern part of the province, right close to the United States. So what we're going to look at, when you go back on here, I want you to look at three types of human activities put the species. What did humans do to put a species at risk? We already talked to someone, like overhunting, okay? like deforestation, like taking away their home. Which bird was the most numerous bird on earth at one time? Not the McDonald's pigeon, the one that fights for food. It's another type. Uh, how was the extinction of the buffalo prevented? Okay. And how can a forest fire be a good thing? And there's a classification there. I have four categories at risk. You've seen that when I started. Extinct, endangered, threatened, and vulnerable. I want you to give two examples of organisms in each. I have put a, a little sheet here. So you can put in here, what does it mean to be extinct? Anybody remember? There's none left, right? Everything's gone. So examples of two animals that are no longer here. One everybody knows. If you watch Jurassic Park. Dinosaurs, okay? So you find another one. Endangered, threatened, and vulnerable. They're all in those slots, okay? It won't take you very long. So that's it for today. Sorry, let's go back to here. These are your, uh, there's actually only five things to do there, but you fill out that, the last one is a fill out the, the chart. All right, that's it for, that's it for